Okay, welcome everyone. For those uh, who join, you can add your name and country in the chat area. Uh, for um, office purpose, let me uh, clarify that this meeting will be recorded. So if you don't want to say anything embarrassing, please don't. It will be later posted on the YouTube channel of Wiki Africa so that people can look at it and refer to it when they have some needs uh, with regards to intellectual property issues. So why have we decided to do that and what is it that we want to do? Uh, we have been running Wiki Loves Africa for now seven years. So with many of you already in the past and my co-lead is Ayla who is on the call. Um, over the year, we have collected many images and uh, many new people joined. But some of the frequent uh, issues that we have met were regarding intellectual property rights, regarding uh, copyright issues, uh, or regarding some uh, other legal issues on Wikimedia Commons, which in particular made it happen that images magically disappeared or were deleted on site either deleted on site or they were simply listed for deletion and the, the photographer invited to comment and defend the images and not doing it. So it caused quite a lot of um, anger sometimes or dis the disappointment from participants or from national leads, uh, organizer of Wiki Loves Africa. So last year we improved the situation quite a lot with the help of the Isaac, who is on the call here, Isaac, show, hello. Uh, and it, it was really helpful trying to explain some of the issues and some of the reason why images were sometimes deleted or proposed for deletion. But still, uh, we thought it would be a good idea to further explain the reason why things are deleted or not deleted. And we thought we could record this in the webinar so that people could refer to that later on when that happened. So here's the thing we are doing today. I have a screen to share with you. So we prepared a bunch of slides. Those will be, um, list, will be added to Wikimedia Commons after the, the webinar so that you don't need to take notes, it's there. So shortly, today's webinar, intellectual property, copyright, licenses, and other legal issues related to the Wiki Loves Africa contest. This could actually work for any contest. So Wiki Loves Folklore, Wiki Loves Monument, whatever, there are some fine tuning, but essentially those are some generic points that should, could help any uh, lead organizer of a photographic contest. The people who are speaking today, we had two of us, there are two of us. So there's me, Florence Devoir, on terre. I've been the co-lead organizer of Wiki Loves Africa for the past seven years. And we have the help of Isaac Olatunde. I will leave him present himself quickly, perhaps. Oh, Isaac, please. Thank you very much for that um, introduction and the background information. Really happy to be here. Uh, so I'll be facilitating this uh, with my colleagues, Florence uh, from Wiki in Africa. Um, so for the next uh, one half, so we'll be talking uh, a lot more about um, intellectual property, uh, copyright, and licensing. So my name is Isaac Olatunde uh, from Nigeria, and um, you can find me around on the Wikimedia project as T cells. Uh, I am uh, the founder of the Wikipedia Pages Warning Photos, which uh, is a major campaign that's primarily focused on the use of um, images collected from various campaigns and, and context on Wikipedia articles. Uh, I also co-founded the Wikimedia Nigeria Affiliate in Nigeria, and um, I am also uh, a licensed reviewer on Wikimedia Commons. So, and very recently, I also got nominated as a young leader for 2021 uh, by the World Economic Forum, though not related to Wikimedia, but uh, it's worth mentioning. So, um, I'll be talking uh, about copyright and related issues uh, with examples. So, feel free to ask questions or jump in to, you know, comment on some of the content uh, I'll be sharing for the next few minutes. So uh, copyright, um, it's very complex. Uh, it's, uh, it's a concept in intellectual property. 
<clears throat> and uh, when you talked about copyright, we talked about uh, illegal tools that actually gives uh, the copyright uh, order. That's the creative, uh, creator of uh, creative works, the rights uh, to their works. It gives them this um, uh, uh, power to be able to control the use and the redistributions of their work. So like every other property, uh, copyright, it's, it's expires, just like every other things that uh, uh, you can think of. So uh, I will be talking a lot uh, about um, some of the basis of uh, copyright. So Florence, can you just uh, move this slide? Again? Yep, yep, yep. Um... But let me start. I was just quick, quick, quickly checking whether I can hand over the control of the waiting room to Ayla, but um, I don't see how to do that. So I need to keep an eye on it. Okay, let me go here and jump in to start for Do you want to present this part or do you want me to do it? Because you apparently started. Okay, please do it. Uh, it's okay. already up. You will, you, you will complete as well. Um, presentation mode. Can someone remind me how I do that from this computer? I don't know. So no. I think it's just that top, that little button at the top. Uh, left of your screen, the yellow one. This one. Partage, isn't that? Oh, I don't know. No, that's share. Definitely. Isn't it? Defi Oops. Great. Moved it. Admit. Okay. I don't know. I never used it on this computer, so I have no idea. Do you see enough or not enough? Is it big enough? Lear. Here. Yeah. Partager. Sorry about that. Okay, would that work better? Yes, that's yes? better. Yes, people happy? Okay, okay great. Yeah. Awesome, hello Fawaz. Um, right, just housekeeping thing. Yes, we were here. Uh, just housekeeping uh, issue. We will be together for one hour and a half. Uh, and we have listed every single of our elements in 12 points. So Isaac introduced very quickly what copyright is. We will run through every one of these points, which are listed on the meta page so that you can easily, more easily afterwards find back the element you're interested in. So to, to make it short and then I will hand over to Isaac. Uh, would like to remind first that every creative work produced is covered by copyright. And this is true across the entire world. There are some slight differences according to countries, but essentially it is more or less the same. The important element in these sentences are the following. First, it's every. So it doesn't matter your age, the place you live in, uh, it, it is covered from the moment it's fixed in a tangible fashion, in a tangible way. So if something is still in your head, it's not protected, but as soon as you take the picture, it's protected by copyright and there is nothing to do, it's automatic. The second key important word is creative. So Isaac will go back on this later on because sometimes it's difficult to estimate whether a work is sufficiently creative or not sufficiently creative to be covered. There, was some fine tuning. there is some fine tuning here. And the third element is copyright. For those of you who are French speaking, we typically use droit d'auteur in French and copyright is more for the uh, English speaking area. Um, there are some differences between copyright and droit d'auteur, but for most of our purpose, in particular today and for Wikimedia Commons, we can generally consider that it's more or less the same thing. Um, the, for the rest of the, of the webinar, we will mostly use the term image. Of course, what we say is also true for videos. It's also true for audio records or um, such works that you could import. 
It's also important, uh, th there's uh, one element I would like to mention. Of course, you remember that when we upload an image to Wikimedia Commons, we have to create a user account. But most of our new participants will tend to not realize they could also create a user page or they will not bother creating a user page. So they will only be known from their username. Uh, I strongly recommend that you suggest the participants to actually create a user page and explain a little bit about them. They, on, they do not have to give their real identity, but if they are advanced professional photographers, then it really truly makes sense for them to explain who they are and take the opportunity to, look, to link to any um, relevant website where we might know more about them. And I, will want, I would like to take the opportunity to present the case of what is visible in the description of an image. It can be something as simple as your username, which could be Anter, and that wouldn't go any further, but it's also possible to put more information related to yourself. That's the case of Luc Viatour, who is a professional photographer participating for several years, created several featured pictures. Well, in the description area of the images, he put some interesting information regarding himself. So this is something to keep in mind. Most of our participants do not bother creating a user page, and I think they should. Second point, going quickly, copyright starts from the moment you fix your, product, your, your image uh, in a tangible format, and it will last for a duration of time, which is variable depending on the countries. Uh, most countries on the planet signed a convention that was over 100 years ago. And according to this convention, if they signed it, the copyright term are at least 50 years. But in most cases, people went beyond this. In Africa, there's, there are a couple of countries who didn't sign the Berne Convention. You might see it in this very light green thing. Uh, but most of them signed. Um, the minimum convention is the minimum terms is the typically the, the dark green, which you see here in the middle of Africa, whilst the countries in yellow and orange choose to actually expand the term. As you can see, there are many different cases across Africa. So it's very important that you just simply know where you stand. What is the duration of the terms of copyright in your country? I have two people to make go in. Three, two, get them out. Fine. So, um, what do you get once you are covered by copyright? Mostly, uh, you have every right on your on the thing you created. People have to mention your name. That's what is called attribution. Uh, and they uh, must ask you permission to um, uh, use your picture, to modify, remix your picture, or to reshare the pictures with others, or even to sell the pictures. So all those rights, they have to ask you the permission for as long as at least 50 years after your death, and in some cases, even beyond, way longer than that. So it's a little bit, uh, it's a strong limitation to the use of images produced by people, which is why the Creative Commons licenses were um, uh, launched. And I actually recently learned because I, I didn't know before that the Creative Commons Association, uh, Foundation Association well, organization was launched on exactly the same day than Wikipedia that was back on the 15th of January 2001. I don't think it was on purpose, but it's quite funny that it's actually the same uh, date of anniversary than Wikipedia. So the, what the Creative Commons license propose is to put something on top of the regular normal copyright ter, um, consideration. So that's an additional element, that's something completely legal. And that's a way for you to say, 
I want to give, a, I want not to stay on this, I, these images are strictly reserved and you need to ask me permission all the time. I want to move toward a situation where in advance I decide to give you the right to do certain things with the images. So typical, um, uh, the, the four elements that are typically put in the front, to the front um, when it comes to Creative Commons licenses are the following. That's the four elements you see on the, on the left-hand side. I will comment them slightly further. On the right-hand side, you see the spectrum of all possibilities you have through the Creative Commons license. At the very bottom, all right reserve is the standard situation where people need to ask you your permission all the time. And then there's a whole bunch of licenses, there are six of them, which allows you to be more specific about what you authorize people to do or not to do. And at the top of the table, you have what we call CC0, which is essentially the equivalent of public domain. Public domain is what happens when the terms of copyright expire. So, for example, in France, copyright terms will expire 70 years after my death, and I wish to die as late as possible. So let's say I die at 90 years old. That means the, the, my, my work are protected for a whole 160 years. No one can do anything without my permission until that time. After 160 years, the work fall under in the or elevate to the public domain, which means anyone can actually use it without having to ask permission from anyone. So all the Creative Commons licenses are in the middle, providing a bunch of rights to people by default. I'd like to slightly give a bit of explanation on the no derivative and the non-commercial because these are the ones that are the most often mentioned by photographers. And there are some elements that they, we need to understand about what these two terms mean. When I say, when I create a work and I decide to put it under a license where I do not want to um, have any derivative created from my work, it actually means you can use my picture. You can actually modify it, remix it if you want, but you're not allowed to publish this remix version. So if you use it in the private sphere, and private is a bit vague, but if you use it, this remix version in the private sphere, that's fine but you are not allowed to share with others to publish publicly this, this new version of an image. That's for the non-derivative. For the non-commercial, it essentially means that when I publish an image under a non-commercial non -commercial term, I do not allow you to have, to make benefits, financial benefit from my image. But even that is a little bit vague and sometimes misunderstood. There's a notion of your primary, your primary intent in reusing this image is to make cash. For example, if you reuse my image to, to do postcards and then publish them and sell them, that's the primary purpose. The primary purpose is to actually make money from the image. But if you put it on a website, you do not sell it, but you might get some benefit, indirect benefit from it, that's fine. So for example, you may reuse it in a book very often because the, the goal of your reuse is not to primarily make money. So it's not completely excluding the use of images from commercial thing. The typical example is if I insert an image on an educational book, even if the, the educational book is, is sold as a very low price, that's fine. That's a non-commercial use. So with that being said, I'm going to hand over uh, the, the microphone to Isaac so that he can explain you a little bit in detail what all this means in, for the use on, creative, on uh, Wikimedia Commons 
and what it uh, implies in terms of participation to the Wiki Loves Africa contest. So Isaac, I leave you the floor and I will grab it back at the end. Uh, I suggest that we do some breaks from time to time to see if there are questions. Um, you can you can either open the microphone and ask the question if anything wasn't clear, or you can put it in the chat. It's less visible. So are there any questions so far with regards to what I explained very quickly about copyright? Please just grab the microphone if you have a question and, and uh, go. No questions? Okay, so let's give the microphone to Isaac then. Please go on, Isaac, tell me when you want me to slide the slides. Okay, thank you, Flo, for that um, detailed uh, information about um, the copyright element and um, the terms of use of this uh, copyright uh, licenses. So uh, I'll be taking over from here, from Florence, then to talk to you more about this. So uh, Creative Commons uh, operate different licenses uh, that allows you to actually dictate or you know, tell the world how you want your works to be used. But for the purpose of um, the Wikimedia Commons and the Wikilove Africa, we will only be focusing on three out of these licenses. So, uh, and these three licenses are those that are acceptable on Wikimedia Commons. And since Wikilove Africa uh, aims at, you know, generating these free licenses, uh, free license uh, content uh, and put them on common. So we will only be talking more about those that are much relevant to this context and Wikimedia Commons. So we accept just three licenses on Wikimedia Commons and they have, CC BY, that's Creative Common Attribution, CC BY, then CC BY SA, which is Creative Common Attribution Share Alike, and CC Zero. So uh, I'll be explaining each of them uh, separately. Other licenses include CC BY uh, uh, ND, that's not derivative, non commercial, that's another NC that uh, Florex Elial. Uh, explain so uh, i'll be focusing more on those three that um, we accept on wikimedia commons so wait slide. those are the, the three ones at the top here cc0 oh, yeah. cc by and cc by sa those are the only one allowed so uh creative commons attribution cc by this particular license says you can use my work however you want but you must attribute my works to be, which means for every use of a freely licensed works under this license, you must attribute the copyright order of that work, which means the creator, the original creator of that work. Now, there is a um, Creative Commons Attributions Share Alike, CC BY SA. This says, use it however you want, but attribute my works to me. And if you must modify my work, share your version under the same license. So this also, you know, kind of dictate how you should use this particular license. So it's saying that if I put my, if I release my work under this license, you are allowed to, of course, use it for whatever purpose you want, including commercial. You are free to modify it, which means you are free to create your own version from that work. But when you modify, when you create your own version, your own version must be shared in the same license for which I shared mine, which means you must release your own version of that work in the same license, CC by SA. That's what this uh, copyright order is requesting from you. So you can see it's uh, CC by SA. You must attribute. That's one thing that is common to the Fox license and this license, you must attribute the copyright holder. But in this case, you must share your own version of this work 
using this same lexus. Next, please. So the top one, uh, which we accept on common, is the Creative Commons attribution. Uh, no, this is CC0, Creative Commons 0, CC0. This says, use it however you want, just like the public domain work. We will explain a little bit about uh, public public domain means that um, the copyright has expired. You use it as if the copyright has expired, as if it no longer have a copyright. You know, and that's what this person is saying. They are not saying that um, you should share your own passion in the way you know they share that uh, work. You should share it in whatever. I mean, you should release it under whatever license you want. You can make comments from it. You can make derivative work from it. You can use it mercilessly, however you want. So that's what uh, this uh, CC0 is uh, saying. This, uh, just uh, to add a tiny little point here, um, the CC0 will depend on a little bit on your jurisdiction. For example, in the United States, it's not mandatory to attribute. It's they so people under doing uh, releasing images under CC zero often will not even require that their name is mentioned. Uh, so there are some websites where you will find some CC zero with no names. Uh, in other countries, and that's the case in mine, uh, we have to always mention the name. We always have to attribute. So even though it's a CC zero, that's a CC zero where we have to mention the name. It's a bit tricky because it depends on the countries. Absolutely, that's correct. Next slide. So uh, this particular concept is very important, uh, the threshold of uh, originality. So this is a concept that actually uh, is frequently used in copyright law anyway to assess whether a particular work or a portion of it can be copyrighted. So what we are trying to say in essence is that it's not all work that can be considered copyrighted. So we usually use this to differentiate works that are sufficiently original to warrant copyright protection from those that are not. And I want us to look at this particular example. Do you want me to go to the next slide or not? I, I no, 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 it, no. It's okay here. I, I want to explain some intricacies yep. around this photograph. So if you look at it here, it says this photo is eligible for protection, but not the body. Now, there, there was a legal, you know, tussle between X Oskin and uh, Sky Spirit uh, a few years ago. So uh, Sky Spirit actually commissioned uh, X Oskin to help them take a photo of, uh, of this body for promotion. So meanwhile, at that time, there was no clear agreement between Sky Spirit Inc. and Ed Oskin on who will retain the copyright. So Ed Oskin, you know, went ahead to obtain the certificate of, of the photo after taking the image. So later, Sky Spirit Inc. realized that photo wasn't really good enough. So they decided to commission another person to take that same photo. So another organization took that photo and they used for promotion. So at Oskin realized they've commissioned someone else, you know, uh, because he actually produced a sample for them earlier for them to see if they could actually move forward, uh, you know, with the contract. But having realized that another organization has taken over the job, so he, he sued Sky Spirit, claiming that the work they create, the new work they create depends on his own uh, version of that work. That was unfortunately very funny. So in their defense, uh, Sky Spirits said, at asking owed no copyright over this image because they own the bottle, they own the, the label inscribed on the bottle, which means that the, the, the work of at uh, asking is based on their own work, which means a derivative work has been created from their own original work, which is the bottle and the, the sky vodka inscription. I mean, so then the judge, after all uh, uh, comments from the uh, legal team, they, they affirmed that since the bottle 
is a utilitarian object, which means it's not meant to be decorative, it's, it's, it's for use, then that bottle cannot retain, cannot have copyright. And that's why they said here that the bottle is not protected by copyright. Then the inscription on it, the sky broker, it's a mere simple uh, uh, letters. So there's no uh, creativity here. It's just, uh, it's not original enough for us to say, this is a creative work. There's absolutely nothing creative in writing sky broker. So in that regard, this uh, particular uh, uh, label cannot be considered a copyrightable element simply because it is below the threshold of originality. That is, it is not sufficient enough. I mean, it's not sufficiently original enough to warrant copyright protection. So we will not be considered this as a copyrightable element. So later, uh, they, 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 later I found that if you claim that they took, I mean, your, your home version of the photo, it's it's where they design theirs. I mean, they rely on your own version to design their own version. Is there other way than this bottle can be taken, this photograph can be taken without the need to use a camera? So the answer at that time was no, that if they have to take a quality photo, of course, definitely they will adjust the camera to suit, uh, I mean, the lightning to suit the, the exact uh, result they want. They will set the angle and all of that. So that does not necessarily mean that they have depended on your own work. So it's it's a very complex thing. But what we are trying to say is that for simple designs like this, you know, you can consider it a copyrightable element, although can still be protected uh, or, or can be protected somehow as a result of some non-copyright restrictions. So we'll get to uh, that later. We just know fully well that simple designs such as this cannot be considered copyright. So next, Florence. Oops. So single logos and design, just like I mentioned earlier, is OK. You can upload them to common because they are usually considered as uh, below the threshold of originality. That is, they are not sufficiently original enough. There's not, there's little or no, but there's nothing creative in many of them. They are just simple shape. So we can consider them copyrighted. If you look at this um, uh, Chicago Station um, uh, logo, you can see that it's consists of uh, just, um, just text in a simple typeface. So it is not an object of, of copyright in US, and I, I believe that will also apply in several other countries. It's, it's just a plain text. However, this particular logo is also protected by uh, a non-copyright restrictions, which is a trademark law. So by trademark law, this can be protected, but not by copyright law, because it's a very simple uh, text uh, written. But Isaac, when, when we upload such logos on, on commons, it's fine, but that means we need to put a mention of the trademark situation on the description. Or do we, do we have to put the trademark mention or do we, don't we have to? I don't get your question, sorry. Wait, uh, there's a microphone open somewhere, I'm just closing it. Oh, by mistake, I think I closed you. <laughs> it's, it's like, just pay attention because you are no more on. The mouse is reacting strangely. Isaac, you need to unmute your microphone. Um, Okay. It's it's so. it's uh, the, the mouse is sliding, so I keep on trying to. Uh, yes, the, the question I was asking. Uh, I know I met a problem with Orange. You know the company Orange. Their logo is just uh, a rect a square in orange, and it's written orange in white. So it's very simple. So for example, their logo is not protected uh, by copyright. So it's on Wikimedia Commons. But for in such situation, do we have to uh, to add uh, somehow um, a notice, a template, 
in the description of the image to mention that it might be covered by trademark law. Is it an obligation or how does it work? Yes, it, it's an obligation for you to uh, give information about the status of the copyright in the descriptions. When you, hmm. when you upload such work, you have to actually you know, put a caveat there saying that this work, yes, it's not copyrighted, but it's also protected by the trademark law. So uh, there are different templates there on common. So if I can open it, then I can show you how it looks. But that information about um, the, the trademark uh, protection should usually be there. It's okay, we can, we can drop the link on, on the meta page as well for reference. Okay, that's a lot of sense. Yep. So, next point. Yep. So, uh, another important thing, which I think is most useful for people in Africa, is the understanding of this concept of the minimis. The minimis is, 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 is a concept we usually use in copyright to describe the minima or trivia use of copyrighted works in such a way that permission or consent of the copyright order is not required. What we are trying to say here is that there are instances where you must you know, get permission from the copyright order of a particular work to be able to use them, even photograph them for use. And there are ways you can also take those photographs without the need to take permission from them. Why also not violating their copyright? So this is what uh, the minimis is saying. Uh, in most African countries, uh, there is um, no freedom of panorama, which means copyrighted work, including architects sculptured in public places, cannot be photographed without the permission of the original creator of those works, of those buildings, sculptures, and the artworks. So now the question is, how do you photograph these objects without violating their you know, copyright and without the need to start looking for the copyright order to grant you permission? That's where it comes in. So the meaning is talking about, can you go for a bit? Yep. So it is telling you that when you see a copyrighted work, do not focus your camera on the object directly if you have no idea of who the copyright order is to get permission. If you are not sure, you even get permission from that person. And if you're not sure that that work is already in the public domain, I mean, it's a PD work. That means it's, it's old enough to have lost its copyright. So all you need to do is to find a way to you know, shoot, make your shoot without focusing on that object, why you still capture that same object. If you look at the screen now, you will see, you know, you know such instances we accept such photographs on common, even though you capture the copyrighted object, as long as you don't focus on it. So you still have a certain level of uh, freedom to upload them to Wikimedia Commons. So if you look at this, um, this picture, you will see that in, on the screen, there are a lot of copyrighted elements there. But the photographer didn't just focus on one, rather, he focused on the entire view there and took his shot. So in that case, we will not say he or she violates copyright. They have just simply taken a photo of a wide range of objects. And in this case, we can accept this sort of photo on common. So there are other examples I would like to show. Just as a note, um, Isaac, once I was running an editathon in Marseille and I had a bunch of books, uh, books of references, sources, and I, all the books were down on the table and we were happy and we took a picture of the book sitting on the table just to show that we had material that we could use during, a, a, during the editathon. And yeah, uh, the next thing I know, the picture, my picture was uh, deleted because the books were, the book's cover, of course, were copyrighted. But the, 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 the books were the main element in the image. 
if I had put a slightly larger image with the books being in a corner, that would have been right. Yes. Oh, That's yes. Oh, so yes. in that instance, perhaps the photographer actually focused more on that uh, book with a cover, you know, rather than capturing the entire you know, table, including all the um, objects there. So if you focus on a single object more in a way that can reasonably be considered as uh, uh, your targeted, uh, you know, object, then you you definitely be penalized for balancing. But in cases where you take, you know, the entire object on that desk, then you can invoke the de minimis principle. Say, hey, this is de minimis because I didn't focus on your photo or your object. Rather, I took. You do have to prove that I actually focus on your photo, and in most cases, that is always very difficult. Okay, good. So, and that's an excellent example from my so this country. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different countries with different issues, you know, and uh, we treat some of these things on a case by case basis. So it might not be a problem in some countries, in Nigeria, for example, but other countries, especially France, I know there are a lot of legal issues around copyright and, and the rest of that. So if you look at this photo, this is another uh, example of um, a Louvre pyramid. The, the, the aim of the uh, photographer uh, might be to take the image of this Louvre pyramid. But because they are scared of copyright, they don't know the copyright status of that building. They don't even know who the architect is. So they felt that the best or the safest way to take this sort of photo is to take the entire plaza. And that's actually what they've done, what, what they've done here. Why taking the entire plaza, they still capture their major objects. So what we're trying to say here is that if there's no freedom of panorama, that is, there's no freedom to take, you know, uh, copyrighted objects in public spaces in your country, this is how to take those objects without us, without the need to take permission or violating copyright. So make sure that you don't focus on that object only. Take it in a way that you capture other objects around it. So in that case, nobody can say you have violated their copyright because you can always invoke uh, the de minimis principle, saying, hey, I didn't focus on your building. All I did was to take the environment, not your building. Your building is only an incidental to my photo, but not, a, not the target of my photo. So there's no how uh, that person uh, can, you know, uh, be validly claim that you took the image of their photo because there's no way you'll be able to take your photo without its own image appearing there. So that's uh, one important. So understand that if you are in a country, for example, in Ghana, where you want to take images of buildings or sculpture or artwork in public places, take it in such a way that you capture all other objects around it. So in that case, you can upload them to common without anyone deleting them. And if there are instances where some people, you know, maybe those who really does not have a sound knowledge of the de minimis principle, taking them for deletion, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I'm available. Florence is here, Isla, and a few other people you can talk to. So we will weigh in and explain things to them in a better way that they will understand. So we can go to the next slide. Good. We have a question from Euphemia. Yes, thank you so much. My question goes to you, Isaac. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, I, I wanted to um, get your view on what you just mentioned in the Nigerian context and uh, when we're looking at uh, public buildings or government owned buildings, um, artworks and sculptures. Um, does this um, apply to yours? Because sometimes I notice that uh, there are some buildings you might want to take pictures of. Um, nobody cares, they just allow you to take such pictures. In other cases, they might just not want you to take that picture. 
So I wanted to uh, know because you were saying that the freedom of paranormal um, is applicable in some country and in other countries is not. I wanted to know our case in Nigeria around what we're talking about. Thank you, Ifumia, for your question. Nigeria happens to be one of the few countries in Africa that enjoy freedom of panorama, which means that copyrighted work or elements or, or, or stops in public domain can be photographed without the need to take permission, uh, be it government property or individual's property. So it means that you are free and you are allowed by law to take photo graphs of those works as long as they are in public they are in the public space you know you are allowed to photograph them so there's no limitation unlike other countries yeah it, those instances where people say you shouldn't uh photograph or, or take photograph of buildings they are probably not familiar with the copyright law and um i've been able to you know participate in one or more photo works where We've had such problems with people. Uh, it's it's very common because many of them don't even know that um, you are allowed to take photograph of those things, and they will make comments from it. So they want to either send you away or ask for you to tip them and all of that. If if that image is so important to you, you can politely explain to them that the law allows you to do that. And if they insist for safety reason, you can just uh, let go and come back another time to take. But generally, it is allowed to take photos of copyrighted objects in public space in Nigeria. Okay, thank you so much. Lucky Nigeria. Okay. <laughs> Very lucky. <laughs> uh, the next slide. Oh, yes. Next point. Everybody sign on the de, de minimis, super important de minimis. So, um, while we're talking about uh, uh, the minimis, we still mention the freedom of panorama because uh, it's very, very relevant and interwoven. But what we are saying is that in most countries, particularly in Africa, um, all these copyrighted objects, including paintings, sculpture, architect, and all that. They are, there are restrictions in taking of those photographs. So you can't just take photographs of those objects without the written paper. Some of those things belong to the government and that's where they make money from. So they, we, they won't allow you to take them. So, uh, but unfortunately that's a problem. Uh, we, we do just have to work out to make sure we can let you know, the government see reasons why they should review their law. But if if that's not applicable in your own country, then it may take some time, but there's nothing we can do at the moment. All you need to do is to just understand that principle of the minimis. Once you understand that principle of the minimis, you can actually bypass some of these problems with freedom of panorama and all of that. So um, it's correct, many African countries does not enjoy this freedom of panorama. But you can still take photos while you take considerations of the needs to not focus on that only object. Rather, take a group of you know, objects together at the same time without focusing on any of them. In your description, you will definitely describe your targeted object there. So that will still make sense and still acceptable for us. So FOP is a problem. But uh, there's absolutely nothing we can do now other than you understanding that concept of the minimis to be able to work with you. So can we check the next slide? So these are the countries where uh, there is no FOP exception. So many. The case of the Republic is even the worst to be because the government has explicitly stated that four clause should not be you know, uh, released under a free license, for clause generally. So uh, I am still struggling to understand how folks in Benin Republic will be able to effectively participate in the ongoing with killer for law because of these restrictions. That's a problem, but I know maybe one day they will get over it. So these are the other countries where 
this is a major problem. Botswana, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, you know, Syria, Lord, including South Africa, they don't enjoy this freedom of panorama, which means works permanently on public display in those countries cannot be photographed without permission from the copyright holder. So you cannot photograph them, but you can still photograph if you understand that the minimis. You see, I keep talking about that because I know it's very, very important to uh, your work and the context in, in general. Yeah, there's a frequent reason for deletion, so. Yeah. So now um, I have another example here about the Burj Khalifa. The Burj Khalifa is the tallest uh, building you can see here. So this photographer clearly understands that there's no, you know, uh, uh, clear freedom of panorama in UAE. Yeah, we say UAE allows the freedom of panorama only when used in broadcast programs. So this is the only exception where you can freely take images on a public display. But such images will not be acceptable on common because they only accept it for use in broadcast programs, which means you can't make comments from it. You know, you can't uh, even modify it the way you want and share your version under whatever license you wish. But this photographer, you know, thought of the best way to actually take this photo to actually take this photo. So what they did was that they captured this building, this tall building and several other building around, relying on the concept of the minimis. And that's why we say freedom of panorama by source the minimis, which means in this country, they don't enjoy full freedom of panorama, but we can still use the, 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 the principle of the minimis to still take that, uh, you know, um, copyrighted object without the need to look for the you know architect that created that work that created that work and or you know uh, violate their copyright so this is a smart way to actually as far as i'm concerned for those countries that does not enjoy pure panorama this is a smart way to participate in those contexts you know without violating people's uh, copyright so that that's a very clear example there are other examples, but these are the prominent ones I, I can find around. I didn't know they were partial of freedom of panorama. P freedom of panorama with restrictions, actually. With restrictions, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, the, the, the case I face the most often is actually using education for educational purpose. Uh, often when you try to take a picture, people will tell, you will say, no, this one is copyrighted and people will, will react and say, in, for educational purpose, that's fine. And one of the things they do not understand is that on commons, we want to go beyond educational purpose so that everyone can use that. So these exceptions are sometimes uh, more of trouble for us. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, they can actually photograph and use it for educational purpose. But the problem is the Wikimedia Commons because anything you upload there can be used for commercial purpose. And using some of this, uh, you know, um, copyrighted work for commercial purpose could be problematic. You know, nobody wants their work, nobody wants people to make comments from their whole work without something getting back to the especially in 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 in, in the developing countries like uh, you know africa and all of that so it's a problem you can use it for fair use you know outside of wikimedia commons but upload on that project is unfortunately a problem sorry okay is there any question for the freedom of panorama versus the minimis that's the case show of hands Please or ask any microphone. question any no question is is silly ask anything so that we can you know uh, provide insights on some of them if not all so in case i'm moving to the next point if you if you guys have a question do not hesitate to jump in so 
Yeah, per so, right of personality. Okay, thank you very much. There are instances where an object may not be copyrightable, but are still protected by some other factors. So generally we call those ones, uh, uh, those restrictions are uh, non-copyright restrictions. Uh, but you do have to you know, know that um, people generally, they have the right to publicity, which means they have the rights to dictate how they want to be photographed one, and how they want the photographs to be used. So before we talk uh, on that, I would like to mention that content on Wikimedia Commons can you know, be used for whatever purpose, can be modified, can be redistributed under the license for which the original work has been released. That's, that's a fact. But there are other additional legal restrictions that can, you know, uh, dictate, you know, how such work will be used, in spite of the fact that they and they, they do not. Uh, I mean, you know, what I'm saying is that commons allow you to use anything there for whatever purpose you may deem fit. But there are other restrictions that can restrict the use of those works. And that was uh, what happened in the case of uh, some works that are protected by trademark. So uh, these are some of the limitations that may arise from your use of some content on commons. Either they are protected by trademarks or by personality rights or political censorship, depending on the countries. But just know that there is need for you to respect some of these additional restrictions when you come across them. They sometimes dictate how they want their work to be used. Humans, for example, human beings, we are not a copyrightable element. So which means you can freely take photo of any human. But when they object, when they object, the right thing to do is to respect their wish. If they insist, you know, for few of us who go on the you know, photo work, if you see something that you need to take, maybe somehow you capture a, a, a person sitting or standing beside that object. If they insist that you should delete that, you know, photo, please delete it. The reason is, if you insist to not delete it, you will be violating their personality rights. That's their rights of publicity and their rights, you know, of uh, of um, uh, of of the use of their photos for purposes they might not even uh, have an idea. So these are some of the things that comes around. Yeah, we mentioned earlier that there are some logos that are simple enough that they will not around copyright. But some of them, unfortunately, there are still restrictions on their use. Few, I mean, yesterday, I, yeah, this is a very clear example. Uh, if you look at this logo, it's just a just a simple text. But this particular logo is also protected by the trademark law. Is it is it has been trademarked, which means that there are other additional restrictions on its use. This is the same for most, you know, business-owned logos. Uh, I have a friend who works in Etel, uh, Nigeria, where going out yesterday and we saw, we were talking about copyright generally. So he said, ah, look at Etel logo, the way it's written. I said, well, the logo is simple enough to not warrant a copyright, but I am 100% sure that that logo is actually protected by trademark laws. So these are some of the restrictions that you can have. So when you are using anything at all, or when you are photographing, anything and you are uploading them to common please make sure you understand some of these things yes they looks very simple yes wikimedia commons we accept them but do you have an idea if that object is protected by trademark or other restrictions 
if you don't, but uh, there's something we call precautionary principle on the on common. So it means that if you are not sufficiently sure that those works are actually free, do not use them. Even though they are so of use before you move ahead to either upload them to commons or using them for whatever purpose you want to use them. Um, Do you have questions around this? I have a question related to people. Uh, oh. Just, I would like to maybe refresh my own um, knowledge on this and maybe it actually was refined on commons and maybe changed. From memory uh, in France, um, when a famous, a notable person, a famous person is taking in picture in a public space, then somehow we can uh, dismiss the question of personality rights. Let me give you an example. For example, if a famous actress goes at the Cannes, uh, you know, a, a movie festival, and she is in the public space where, for example, they're walking to go into a building and everyone is looking at them, watching them. We can't, I remember from the past that we considered this was public space and she was a notable person. Then we took, could take pictures. And sometimes we had requests to remove the pictures of such, of such shots and it was rejected under the ground that these were notable people in public space in such a context that they were, they could expect to have pictures being taken of them. In this case, these were fans, loads of people um, taking picture of the person. So it was just our picture being put on comments versus the only, the only, the other one were only going on blogs or private uh, folders. Um, I would like to make sure that this is still the situation, which is means that the personality right are in particular correct when the person is in private space or when the person is in public space, but not expected, expecting to be taken in picture and not agreeing to it. Is that correct? That, that is still very correct. But okay. if, the, if the person requesting for the deletion of that photo is the subject of that photo, maybe if somehow they felt the, the image you took, they, they, they didn't uh, position their head the way they, they should, or they felt they were stressed at the time you took that photo and they don't like their look and they requested for deletion. Usually common, we are not such uh, deletion mm -hmm. without the need to ask. Uh, usually people. that was uh, when we further, they took the opportunity of claiming personality rights to who we were answer this was a taken of a public person in a public space, so we don't want to follow. But when we, we don't want to delete and we refuse, and we, when we actually dig a little bit further, most of the time it's because the person finds she was not so pretty, or maybe you see a scar or something like this. And in such case, the good, man, the good practices are actually ask for a better picture to the person. And usually they will not object, but it was a sort of a fine, thin line, and in most cases, we would take, we would keep these shots. Okay, that, that's that's correct. Uh, but uh, that, that there was a case I I participated in in common, where a photographer who happened to be uh, uh, a porn star. Uh, have their images uh, uploaded on comments. So the legal team actually came to say, hey, we want these photos deleted from comments. The admins refused to honor you know, that request. And that person came to me to, uh, you know, for suppose explain the whole thing and all of that, say, hey, I'm representing so so person. And um, we have requested that I admit our image, uh, I mean, the image of my client be deleted, but this has not been, uh, you know, allowed. That what can they do and all of that? So it was a major, you know, tussle 
to my ad, I track myself in, in saying, hey, if they are, if if we have evidence to be sure that this request is coming from the subject, why can't we honor it? If if that person must have their photo on comments for whatever reason, we can ask for a better quality photo. But mm -hmm. if they don't like this, there's absolutely no reason why we should uh, you know not honor such a request. And someone was you know trying to invoke uh, you know Creative Commons rules, which says, hey, once you release any work under a Creative Commons license, you can no longer revoke it. Yes, that's a fact. But people can still control the reuse of a photo where they are clearly a subject of, of, of it. So in most cases, we should be decent enough to, you know, grant some of these requests. But, you know, we treat that on a case by case basis. Some admins will say, no, we can't because uh, other people might have taken the photo for free use X way and all of that. So deleting here will not make uh, more sense. Yeah. It's one of the complexity around, you know, copyright issues, personality rights and all of this. Bottom line is that we shouldn't try to rely on Creative Commons on licensing issues to try to fix things that could be fixed by other means exactly. or that depends exactly. on other rules. Yeah. Hmm. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, we move on to the next point. Oh. So I believe we've talked yeah. about that. Um, we, we have talked about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Ah, the watermarks. It's a very frequent, in particular, when we have professional photographers, they tend to put watermarks everywhere. So what's the status on this? Well, the use of watermark is not entirely forbidden on Wikimedia Commons. It's acceptable, but the use is usually regulated. There are instances why I, uh, I mean, personally, I object to you know watermark for a number of reasons. This sometimes put our new editors in position where they have to defend what they shouldn't be defending. There are instances where people just borrow you know camera from their friends or rent these cameras, and the the owner of the camera probably must have you know you know addicted the water, the water uh, the metadata in such a way that any photo you take with that camera will reflect their name. So if a new editor, for example, felt the only way, and that's a mistake most people you know, do, they think the only way they can be recognized as the copyright owner of that work is to put watermark on it. Although for different purposes, some they do that just to promote their work. Some they, they, they do it because they felt that is the only way they can be recognized for their work. Some probably felt maybe people will not attribute their work to them and they should just put it there so that anybody who is reusing them will know it's coming from them. So it's, um, it's a little bit uh, 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 funny, you know, when you, we have cases like that. I've actually uh, done that several times, taking people's photos for deletion, simply because the watermark on the photo and the information on the metadata are not the same. So in that case, I, I want to understand why there are discrepancies. And sometimes some of these people, rather than coming straight to say, hey, I borrowed this camera from someone or I obtain it or I rent it. Some of them will lie to say, hey, the camera belongs to them. And, you know, they want so it's, it's very complicated in most cases, but generally we allow invisible watermarks. I mean, watermarks that will be faintly visible that if not look closely, uh, people may not see it then we accept that one. Then the, pro the major problem is that sometimes some people don't even know how to put watermark. So when they put watermark, they, they put it in such a way that they put it in such a way that when you look at the photo, it's actually defaced the photo itself. You know, it gives it a different you know look from what you are expecting to see. So that's unfortunately problematic. And there are instances where people see it as a way they can promote their business. Some will even put a link to their own website. Rather than even describing what the photo is all about, they prefer to describe more about their own, you know, um, um, business than the actual photo they are uploading. So that's a problem. So for participants of this campaign, it's very important for you to understand that every use of watermarks can result in your images deleted for a number of reasons. One of them might be that 
admins or other reviewers will feel you are only using Wikimedia Commons to promote yourself and your business. So you can have your photo deleted if they feel that way. Then if you use you know, a worker mark in such a way that it appears to be obstructing the original work. So that can be considered as destructive and that can also not be allowed. People can easily, you know, get it to the position for those reasons. But if you have, if you must use a watermark, for me, uh, if you can do without using it, it's far, far better. But if you must use a watermark, make sure you use the invisible watermarks. Those ones that you will hardly see them, I mean, they won't be prominent. It will be faintly inscribed on the photo or whatever, but make sure you don't use it watermark in a way that people looking at your wall will find it offensive. And in most cases, common uh, administrators and reviewers, they want to, in most cases, assume <laughs> your intention. So most times they will attribute your intentions to promotion, self-promotion. And in that case, that can, you know, lead to the deletion of uh, most of the work. Then there's also a possibility of, uh, you know, um, people mistaking you for a different person, which means if your metadata information is different from the watermark information, people are likely to take your information. Then you have to struggle to convince them that you are the same person. And in most cases, it doesn't work your stress. I don't know if um, Flor want to add to that. I, I actually have one question and one comment. Um, the one comment is to, by the way, mention that any visible watermark uh, would actually do not permit the picture to be part of the Wiki Loves of Africa contest. We would never accept as a winner a picture that has any visible watermark whatsoever. It happens from time to time in the past that there were pretty decent pictures who could have been winners who were in the shortlist. And we had to contact the, the photographer so that they provide something without the, the, the watermarks. That's the first comment. The second point is about invisible watermark. I, I actually don't really know what this is, but I wanted to know if uh, EXIF data was considered to be invisible watermarks. If what? Sorry. If if exif data, you know the the, the data that is within yes, the, the yes. as if metadata, yeah. As if metadata, so it's yes. it's considered invisible watermarks. That's a classical example of an invisible watermark. Okay, that's the classical example because we had um, so just for the record, we had the problem in the past. I remember we had to discuss that uh, Isla, uh, Isaac. That was two or three years ago of uh, some team leads in some of the countries were actually renting a good camera for the photo walks, but they didn't change the metadata on the camera. So the metadata that would appear on the camera was a bit weird and um, quite different from the claim of the authors. And for it, it was one of the arguments for which the, 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 the images were deleted because there was an uncertainty about who was really the author. So I'd like to insist that it's super important when a camera is rented or borrowed to a friend before a photo walk, a group photo walk, to make sure that the exif data, well, the metadata and the camera are fine. Because that's, that's a, one of the things we do. Uh, number one, when we see, see an image we are not sure and we want maybe to delete, that's one of the things we do. We go see the exit data. If the exit data are missing, I consider that it's a screenshot of something. So that's probably a copyright violation. So it's deleted. And if the, the, the exit data is, looks really weird and not consistent with, with the author's claim, then it's also an argument for deletion. That's correct. So that, that was one of the issues we met a lot in the past uh, from the Wiki Loves Africa contest. I want to insist on this. Make sure to fix the metadata in the camera before going for a group photo walk. It's a big one. Yep. 
Um, okay, for the watermarks, then what do we have? What is the next point? Oh yeah, and so what's going on when, let's talk a little bit about how things are reviewed and, and uh, how, it, how does it work actually? Because uh, even for team lead, it's a bit mysterious sometimes and for participants, that's completely weird. And most of the time when they get a request, they do not even answer to the request. So what can we say about this? Yes, um, I must say that during the um, uh, photography contests, such as Weekly Africa, Weekly Love, Book Clubs, and the rest of them, the community are usually very active in reviewing some of the contents that have been you know, uploaded to Weekly Africa for several reasons, but notably, to ensure that some of those things does not really violate copyright. Um, there are different approaches to that. Some people just care about, uh, you know, content that blatantly, you know, violate copyrights. And those, those contents that um, were taken from another website and upload them to come. So they, they, they just focus on that. Why all those people want to engage in discussions about some of these contents? So they upload, they nominate them for deletion, and of course, expect reactions from the copyright holder and all of that. But the problem we we have sometimes, you know, most people will it's, it's not like we are people are always correct when they nominate images for deletion. There are instances where people wrongly nominate images for deletion. I have done that several times. But if the uploader is not commenting on those discussions or engaging them or telling them why he feels that photo should remain on comments, chances are that the next, uh, after you know the, the, the seven days duration, one admin will just go there and delete without even the need to review whether those contents are actually you know, valid or not. So that's unfortunately a problem. And, for established editors, it's very easy for them to engage in discussions. But for new editors, it's something that is very complex for them to do, partly because they don't even know where to go to. Some of them don't even know they have a talk page where they can respond to comments and all of that. So, but I do feel that um, the, the uh, organizers, the local organizers should help in, you know, uh, monitoring, you know, influx of uploads from their own community so that when they see instances where images are nominated for position by community members, they can weigh in and uh, you know speak on behalf of uh, the uploader. In cases where uh, it is not a must that the uploader must must comment, uh, you know, I mean, or where the input from uploaders will be much relevant, like the issue of watermark. So it might be compulsory for the uploader to actually comment to prove that they indeed own those photos. But there are instances where coming from them is not really too necessary or too important. Any people, any person with experience in copyright can easily you know, weigh in and respond to whatever concerns the, uh, the nominators uh, may have. So um, that's normal because uh, we want to ensure that content on Wikimedia Commons are free for use. We don't create problems for reusers and, uh, you know, bring that project into this record. So these are some of the things that um, we must do as organizers to make sure that we review discussions about this context to see where we can weigh in to support people when they can't or they don't have the ability to comment or adequately defend themselves. So uh, it's very complex, but we will do our bits to make sure that um, we protect uploaders and reusers. Well, often the problem for us is to actually um, track what is related to Wikilabs Africa, because when we go to uh, the deletion, the proposition for deletion log, there's all the images are listed, but we don't see immediately that they are related to Wikilabs Africa. So it's really to be more notified in case when the responder is not reacting so that we may defend the situation. So it's, it's still tricky for me and, and we still have um, to find a, 
a right way to deal with that. That's mm -hmm. absolutely correct. Yeah. Because a lot of um, photos come from different places. Uh, you know, Wikilove's um, Africa we commence uh, in the next few days now. Then we have one running at the same time, uh, the Wikilove folklore. Yep. So sometimes people just take photo as part of Wikilove Africa. It looks like a folklore. Sometimes it looks like oh. so. There are a lot of complexity around uh, those things, and those maintenance works are really not easy. You know, for the organizers who had to, you know, respond to comments from people you know trying to listen to different local organizers design materials and all of that so it's it's very 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 tough but oh. basically whatever we can do if we see it or if there are any reports we can promptly you know act on them at least to you know give people a sense of understanding that they have the full support of the uh, international yep. okay um, I would like to very briefly conclude with two elements I would like to share. The first is the OTRRS system. So it's, uh, you will sometimes find some references in comments left to uploaders that they need to record the permission to use or the confirm to confirm their authorship or to file a complaint, but this is less frequent in our case. They need to record this by sending a permission to OTRS. So what OTRS is, is essentially um, a place where we manage uh, the reception and answering of hundreds of emails, hundreds of emails in all languages. So anytime someone wants to contact the community to discuss a private issue, um, a rather confidential issue or something they do not want to discuss in, in public, they can do in sending an email to the OTRS. On OTRS, there are volunteers uh, who will answer these, these uh, emails. Those volunteers are available in many different languages. They are people who have been identified by the Wikimedia Foundation by providing uh, ID documents, so we know who they are, we know where they live, we know they are adults uh, in their countries, considered adults, and they volunteer to answer questions or comments or anything that is being sent privately by individuals to the community. And amongst the thing that is interesting is sending permission to confirm authorship of a picture. The reason why it is important for Wikilove's project is that when it is an individual that is randomly taking, you know, a middle quality picture of the surroundings, no one will ever comment and ask any permission. But when the picture that is uploaded is really nice, of really high quality, there may be doubts related to the fact that the person who uploaded is really the author. And we want to be sure because we don't want to let pi copyrighted pictures be added to Wikimedia Commons and infringing the rights of the original author. So we want to make sure that the person who uploaded the picture is really, really the author of the picture. And in this case, these people have to send an email to OTRS. They need to provide usually an email address that is somehow legitimate. For example, if they belong to a company, it's a good idea to have an email address with the name of the company in the email address, not to gmail.com, for example. And over there, they will send a document that will be filed and saved for the future, future use for references. There is a system to uh, generate the permission to make it easier. I put the link on the slide here. That's tools.vmflabs.relgen. Uh, it, you enter your name, your email address, the link to the image that is concerned and the choice of the license and you click save and you send the email to permission uh, commons wikimedia.org and this document is being sent to this uh, uh, hosting system and the volunteer who deals, who deals with your email will then put a mention on the image on, on commons uh, that reference to this private email. So that keeps the information over there that you really gave the permission for this image. 
So the OTRS system sounds a little bit complicated. So the good news is that there was a, a full tutorial video being done. It's only in English. Unfortunately, no one took the time to translate it, but it's available in English. It's a slightly long because they took the opportunity to explain a little bit about copyright at the same time. But for those who are uh, for the national team leader, I think it's a good idea to watch this video so that they have in mind the process to uh, use. And if some people are confused when they provide many images and they are asked to provide permission, then it's a good idea as well to drop them the tutorial in English so that they can follow by themselves. So you have the link there. I will put it on the meta page as well. In case you get to request, please provide an OTRS permission. This is the thing. Um, and the last point I would like to uh, very quickly go on, it's not directly for the authors of the images themselves, that's more for the people who, who will reuse the images. And that's, uh, these are some guidelines about what needs to be added to the attribution sentence of your image. So I think it's very interesting for uh, uploaders to reflect on these four suggested elements, because these four elements, only the author can provide them. So usually what we call the TASL method will require that in the attribution statement are the following elements. First, there is the title of the image, the title that describes the image. So for example, in, in this case, that can be young girls in Boussois, for example. Then the, the second element that needs to be added to uh, an image being reused is the author name. So it's really up to the author whether they want to be uh, attributed uh, with their username, which might be very weird sometimes, or if they want to be attributed by their real name. If they don't provide their real name, of course, they will not be attributed properly. The third element is the source of the image in the case of Wiki Loves Africa, if you participate to the contest, there might not really be a source. But if the, the image, for example, was initially published on your website, then it's a good idea to put the source of your website for references. And the last fourth element is the license. By default, any image uploaded to Wiki, for uh, Wiki Loves Africa is licensed under CC by SA. 4.0. You can change that. It's simply that it's the default proposition we have. So in this case, that could be typically a CC by 0, uh, 4.0. Um, why do I mention this? It's simply because when you upload the image, then you need to put the information that would really be useful to attribute the image later on. It's also interesting for the description. But if you don't put any of this information, then it will be very difficult to properly attribute you. And I, I will, uh, will refer back to the, um, the description I showed entirely at the beginning with Luc, Luc Viatour. Luc Viatour, if he hadn't put, um, ah, where is Luc Viatour? Here, Luc Viatour mentioned his real name, full name, first name, last name, and he also, ask how he explained how he wanted to be accredited. So if you want to be credited in certain way, then you need to provide information. If you don't care, well, you don't care, but that's entirely in your hands to do so. Uh, and with that in mind, I think we are basically done. Um, so Isaac, maybe some last word. I, I would like to thank you first very, very much because you, you clarified some of my own thinking in your explanation. Um, and I hope you also clarified the understanding of others. The one thing I will do is that I will record, I rec recorded this uh, entire webinar. I will put it uh, again, as I was saying, on YouTube, on the Wiki Africa channel. I will link that webinar from the meeting page on the Wiki Loves Africa. And I will also add the, the moment, the time where uh, the specific 
point is being mentioned in the video so that people can directly go to the most interesting point. But I think all of them are important in terms of um, contribution to Commons and Wikilobs Africa. Azak, some Thank words. you very much. Elements that we need. Organizing missed. this. <laughs> hey, we thought about it last year and we didn't do it. So this year's done. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fine. I'm really happy to be part of this. Um, so we'll continue our work on Commons to look out for <laughs> images that are wrongly nominated for inclusion. So we <laughs> to try to uh, clean up and uh, find the right uh, the good images from That's the okay. wrong images. And Hi, Hala. I didn't hear from you. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. OK, good to have you here. Good morning. From Nigeria. Good morning. <laughs> it wasn't my show. It's the show of Isaac and Florence. So, oh, um, that's not true. It's our show. <laughs> it's that show. It's yeah. the not Isla show. It's us, including you, Isla. Hi. <laughs> you right, good to connect children. with you guys. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you very much, Isaac, again. Bye. Very useful. <laughs> and um, well, took you to you on the next side. Bye-bye. Yeah, Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone.